This is Twit. We get bombarded with email messages and, and Twitter tweets all about things that we did wrong on the show. And most of the time, I love it. I, I love listening to, to people. I love hearing feedback. I like knowing when we went wrong. But there is one person, Richard, I'm just going to call him Richard, in the chat room who um, was a little bit miffed that we got something wrong. Let me just read you his email. In episode 46, NSA Deep Dive, you contradicted Steve Gibson's revelation about PRISM by saying about TAPS, if you open it up, it really is just fiber. There are no complicated optics in there. They just have a really good way of scraping away some of the cladding and getting enough, just enough of the light to allow the signal to continue to propagate while getting their TAP. As an engineer of 30 years, I have to say that you couldn't be more wrong. There is no way to split the light simply by scraping away the outer clouding of the fiber. More so, you would never be able to maintain signal integrity without a set of precision mirrors to redirect some of the light energy into another strand of fiber. Every tap that serves 1 gig or 10 gig enterprise networks absolutely uses prisms to accomplish this beam splitting. I still love your show, but you shouldn't mislead people into thinking that optic tapping devices are magical boxes with only a few pieces of fiber inside. Well, Richard, you know what? You're right. We don't like misleading people. We don't like giving them erroneous information. And we do like giving them the truth about tapping. But in this instance, I think maybe we need to err on the side of magic. If Jason will go over to our product cam here, I've actually got a professional grade net optics 1 gig and 10 gig flex tap. So these are the taps we actually use at Interop. They're, they're fantastic. They allow us to put a bunch of these into a chassis and then take uh, a single feed and, uh, well, just take the tap that we need. So we, we've got in and out, and then we've got the tap side. Now, if you actually look inside one of these bad boys, this is what you see. That's right. No fancy mirrors, no prisms, no really nothing. There's no beam splitters. There's no blocks of glass. There's no complicated apparatus. In fact, all you have is the fiber that goes from the input to the output. So that's the tap, the pass through. And then this green one here is actually just taken off of. I'm not sure if Jason can get any tighter on that. You can see how you have one fiber in on this side two fibers out on that side. So they've just scraped away enough of the cladding and they've encased it in this uh, epoxy to make sure that it stays in place. Now this is a 70-30 tap, which means that 70% of the light will pass through and continue onto the device that it was intended to pass onto. And 30% of the light comes out and uh, will allows you to actually see what's going on within the tap. Now Cheever, let me ask you about this first. We both worked with a lot of technology like this. Richard used to be right, yes? I mean, in the old days of networking, you actually did require a prism. You required some fancy equipment inside one of these boxes in order to get the tap. Actually, yeah. The, in the old days, let's call it, when NASA was using the uh, star switches, it was a set of semiconductor mirrors to flip the light around and switch it and tap it and so forth. The trick is we're using a piece, we're using some physics that when you're bouncing a whole bunch of light around inside a tube of different, you know, it's kind of like, you know, when you have um, a mirrored tube and you're bouncing it around. If you scrape away a little bit of that and the light's bouncing around, a little bit of light is going to leak out. Um, you can actually make your own, single mode taps are pretty easy to make. You can actually sit there with a dissecting microscope and a good sharp razor blade and you can very gently scrape away the cladding. Keep in mind it's 62 and a half by 125 or 50 by 125. So that means you got to scrape away half the diameter. And the second you, you start getting into the core, just barely nicking the core, you're going to see a blast of light. The easiest way to demonstrate this is when you have something like a uh, fiber finder, a laser with a collimating lens on it so that it spreads the beam. If you have a break in the fiber, it will actually fan out and right, even shining through the um, PVC coating, you're actually going to see this big band of light right at the break. All right. And actually, that's one of the, uh, the principles about light traveling through fiber that we use to find breaks. We have a laser that we attach to the barrel of, of the, uh, the interface with the fiber strand, and we just look for 
the, the bright red light shining out that tells us, okay, that's where our brake is. That's where it's maybe bent too much because you don't have to break the fiber in order to get that light out. If you bend it enough, you'll actually see it on the cladding. Now, uh, people in the chat room are wondering if I let the blue smoke out of this thing. There is no smoke because it, you know, there's no electronics. And believe it or not, even though I've cracked this thing open, and yes, this is a very expensive piece from NetOptics. So Aaron from NetOptics, if you're in the chat room, I'm really, really sorry, but I... Uh, it, it was already broken, so it wasn't me. There's no electronics, therefore no blue smoke.